Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Tauntaun Squadron here on YouTube. My name is Seth Holocron, and we're bringing you not just one, but two Ireland-Finland games, because that's right, there's only two left. And after a gargantuan battle between super good players yesterday, the current score out of the five is Ireland 3, Finland 2. Really close set. Really, really interesting to see where people are going to end up. And the first game, as you can see on your screen right now. Hello, Jenny. Good to see you. Is Chris Caves from Team Ireland against Yane Ninavaria, who is the captain of Team Finland. So... I have explained what I like them all to do. They will hopefully be rolling the dice at the bottom of the screen, which will allow me to see things a lot easier. That will be grand. And two games left at 3-2. If Ireland win either of the two, they go through. Finland, to win this set, must win both. And to be fair... They're uh, setting things up here quite nicely. I, uh, they're setting down their ships. So while they are doing that, um, I hope you're enjoying the whole XTC experience. This is now week four of the seven week tournament. This week, let me let me give you a, a good bit of advice. Mr. Oli Pocknell, world champion elite, is every Sunday. Um, doing wonderful things and doing an XTC roundup, which is great. I really like it. Hello, Dodo, and the Bucket of Awesomeness. Hello, Pond. Excellent. So a good amount of nice people already in the game hasn't even started. So welcome to the stream. Let's go through these lists because I'm loving the way Ayane is setting up his four Nantex all at little angles, trying to get uh, lanes through these quite tightly clustered rocks, uh, all pointing in towards the center of the board. Um, let, let's just go through the lists while they're setting up. So on the left, we have got Chris Caves, and this is his version of Heritani. Starts off with the I-6 Harrison Dulla, the most broken A-wing in the planet. She's got thread tracers for target locks to enable uh, double mobs with everybody else. Garvin Dress, as naked as the X-1 that he flies in, it can literally open its wings. That's all it can do. But his his, his pilot abilities kind of neat. Uh, Kai Katar, he has got Jin Urso as crew. Pretty much if you take a focus, you can change it to invade. So if you get a past and you're spending it, it can become an evade. And a moldy crow, so two out the sides, three out the front, and benthic two tubes in the U-wing. Perceptive co-pilot, take a focus, get a second one, then one of those has to go to somebody uh, within the range that benthic has, which is range two. Leo Organa, three charges, you can reduce the difficulty of your maneuvers, so reds become white, and the pivot wing title. On the other side, Yanni Ninvalia, Totally ruined that. Uh, has got a very strong list. Nantex used to be the bane of all existence. They still are. They are horrible. I do not like them. One iota. But they're still really good ships. He starts off. Uh, they're all I4s. While uh, Hera is an I6. Garvin is also an I4. But Kyle is a 3. And Benthic 2 tubes is a 2. He has 4 Petra Kanaki Arena Aces. All at I4s, four hull, all with treacherous, all with predator, horrible. If you get a bullseye shot, it's three die out the front instead of two. And then the big bad DBS 404, advanced proton torpedoes, thermal detonators, afterburners, as he's trying badly to imitate Darth Vader and his landing struts. So dials are being set as we speak. As I speak, you're, you're not speaking. But uh, what you should see, if they can remember simple logic, once all the dials are set, we are good to go. They will then ping the table that lets me know that it's ready to start the clock. 
looks to me that um, Chris has got all his set up. And as soon as Yane has his up, Ireland and Finland game number six starts as soon as they ping the table. So the boys will check their dials. It is a big thing. Uh, people have flown ships off the board in this tournament, which has been quite disastrous for uh, those involved. No lols, just I, I dislike people putting in the wrong manoeuvre and not being able to regret it until much, much later. So the uh, red and yellow uh, Nantexes are facing north. We're facing north. We are now good to go. Clock, as you've heard, has just gone and we are off and running. So Benthic will move first. Let me actually make this game number six because that is what it is. Not, not five. It is game six. As I said, um, let me actually get this uh, title in properly. That's a lot better. Thank you very much. Let's save that and go back to the game. So, quite a large move forward there from both the U-Wing and Kyle. So, not really showing an awful lot of fear in here. These Nantexes, however, will literally go as fast as possible. I think they can end up with all their stupidity doing something ridiculous, like a seven straight, which is just utterly bonkers. Uh, they are, without a doubt, the fastest ships in the game with all their tractoring nonsense. Uh, before the uh, points update you could take six of these and it was going to destroy the game it really was people weren't wanting to play against it everybody wanted to win try harder to try and win and it was umpteen nantexes versus something else thankfully though uh, the changes have made for a much much better meta so it's a, uh, a roller to the left with the red one who being an antex can probably do umpteen other things as well can probably now Take a focus. See, unbelievable. Very good. Highly, highly maneuverable ships. And the big bad boss man. Now, this boy is. He's horrid. 404 is just a horrible creature. Um. Nick is very far away as always. Poor Nicholas Harris. Oh dear, what a good fellow he is. We do like him at this channel. So, hello Nick. Don't remind me of Timo's board of... Uh, uh, well, you bought it up. So, yeah, there was a German game with Timo Rabi in it who inadvertently flew a ship off the board. And that's all we're going to say on it. That's it was, just, it was just an accident. That's all it was. So, all manoeuvres done. Are we going to get shots? Has Green got Benthic in range already? Will there be some sort of Nantex nonsensory here? There's a... there's a. Uh, oh, look, I can track him myself because I'm completely class. And we'll probably go to... Oh, it takes the boost. Okay. All right. So we still have uh, Garvin Dress in the X-Wing and Harrison Dula in the A-Wing. So go look at that. Maneuver, track to yourself, get a boost forward, take a focus, no stresses. Ugh. Ugh. But, as I said, a very, very, very good list. Uh, so uh, Garvin decides to go right up behind Kyle Katarn. Looks for a a target lock, does not get a target lock. And Herat does a lovely little uh, three forward there by Chris. Will no doubt take 
a focus because I mean why would you not so uh, the Heritani list if you haven't seen it but uh, by looking at chat and the amount of people that we have welcome again the 19 of you who are already here on this absolutely not so great day here in Belfast uh, green does not get his bullseye or range and neither does yellow so uh, nothing happening here at all can't see benthic getting anything at all but all all of these need checked nothing for coyote and oh we get a long range shot so three dice from benthic two tubes uh, this will be um into four as uh the Nantexes, again, for more stupidity, have three other dice. He will spend his focus right there to take absolutely no damage. So the two hits cancelled by the focus spend. And that is the end of the round. Yeah, it, it was my house saying stop using so much bandwidth. Uh, so all the, the house alarm went off and everything was completely barbarically awful. So, um. afternoon, Dom. This is a great background distraction to work. Well, I mean, am I actually working? Like, I'm watching some of the best X Wing players in the world and commentating on it. That's pretty damn groovy. I, I quite like this, this whole thing. Thank you to Pifo and. Um, Polska X-Wing for setting this whole thing up and rolling calendars so all the streamers can get as many games to you guys at home, no matter where you are in the world. And seeing as there's uh, every continent in the world is now covered, that's an awful lot of uh, X-Wing streaming getting done all over the place. I bring my chat up a little bit bigger. So, uh, Holgar, love, love the thought process. Uh, no betting here. This is not good. But I, I am not surprised with uh, your full name that you are bet toing all on Finland. Um, non Texas are, are really good. He is your captain. Uh, I assume that he said if he didn't bet on him, he might drop you if you're a part of the squad. I'm sure he wouldn't. Uh, yeah, he's an amazingly nice guy. So he is, so that's kind of cool. So back to dials. And um, yeah, Chris's position here is sort of being set up for a whole load of three die bullseye attacks because the Nantex will move first. Um, Yane has got the initiative, so that's pretty good for him. So the banks and the, the tractors to get as much onto the, sh the ship he wants to die, kind of critical. I think that's pretty good. Hello, Aku. Uh, well played the other day, sir. It was a pleasure streaming that murder fest of a game that my, like, my God, I have never seen such violence outside of horror movies. Brilliantly played. Well done indeed for your win earlier in the week. I assume that these players have got their own little battle plans in their head for what they want to do. So the Nantex want to go in. They need their uh, they need their their bullseye shots uh, because that increases uh, their shot to a three. If you're at range one and bullseye, that's a four die attack. That makes them almost like X wings with a better extra fade dice. But then we've got this whole malarkey of token passing nonsense from Mr. Caves. So getting through the two, four, five, six, seven, eight tokens around um, will be quite hard for the Nantexes to do. But as first player, Yanni does shoot first. So if he can strip them all away, uh, the Heritani list still a very good one. But at the same stage, not firing on all the cylinders that it requires. Uh, 
So, according to my second computer, we're all good to go. And there's a one forward from Benthic, who uh, checks his range, gives the second focus to Hera, so she can start doing all her ridiculous phenomenons. A full stop handbrake, let's not go anywhere, from Kyle in the Hawk. That is all the manoeuvres from Chris. And then the entirety of Yane's list will try and murder one of Team Ireland's ships because that is their wing condition. Take ships off as quickly as possible. So looks like Green is going to go first. It is going to bank around here. That is a lovely three bank. Probably has got Benthic in his arc for a four die attack. And hasn't even begun to decide what he needs to do just yet. I would imagine yellow will sweep up there as well. Uh, and then probably tractor even closer. In an attempt to maybe block the two from Garvin. Because he's going to leapfrog Kyle. So takes a focus is quite good there there is the three now i will no doubt see a tractor here um that side turret facing away from the rebel fleet as the separatists try and move in for a massive four if not five ship attack onto the u-wing uh because uh leia is horrible uh, so Leia's three charges, you can see the yellow card on the Team Ireland flag mat thing. Uh, Leia, you spend all three and your difficulties are taken down. So you do not have uh, stress if you do a red manoeuvre. And Yanni having a really decent think about what to do. Does he want to try and barrel roll somewhere with a tractor? And this is the problem with Nantex. They, they have got so many things that you can do with each ship. So depending on how close you are to your own ships, your opponent's ships, how close to gas clouds, how close to rocks, etc. It's quite difficult to decide where you're going to go. Now, he looks like he's probably going to take just a focus. And I think that's not a bad decision. Blue will probably come in and do a two. Does indeed. Uh, skipping in between that cloud and asteroid. Now there are ways and means for him to uh, tractor himself. And then move to the right with the tractor and then take his focus. So it doesn't actually really matter, as you've kind of seen so far, where the Nantexes finish their manoeuvre. They will not be where you expect them to be by the end of of their movement. So there you go. There is your tractor to the right. Another bullseye shot into the U-wing. So that is three. That is very well done indeed. Here comes his free focus. And that is three of the five done. So will it be 404 to go next? Or the final Nantex? Doesn't really matter. They all have to move before uh, Chris gets to move his last two ships. Uh, nice little turn in there by 404, who doesn't have all this malarkey nonsense. However, he does have advanced proton torpedoes. So that would involve a lock. And if the torpedoes go into the U-wing, this could be a bit horrid. Um, can only go to the front or the middle for his barrel roll. And that is now four shots from Yane. At the minute, because Chris's ships have not all moved, uh, Benthic is gonna be lit up like a Christmas tree with all sorts of additional light bulbs on it because I think he's going to go that needs to go. So checking for the target lock can get everybody except Hera. Does he 
does he do X-Wing 201 and put it onto Garvin? Or does he just take the safe option and put it onto Benthic and allow? There we go. Top level choice. Because he knows Garvin's got to move. Um, the only way Garvin's not going to get shot by 404 is if he's done a one forward, which I can't really see. There is another brilliant move. Uh, I think, I do genuinely think Yanni's probably played this list a great deal. Uh, skipping past all sorts of debris, and we are going to get a huge, huge battle going on in the center of the board. And that is all that takes a focus. Now back over to Ireland. And Chris has got to decide where his ships are going. Does do the two forward. Remember, has been target locked by um, 404. But would love to, really love to take a target lock onto uh, the yellow there at range one. Now, there is a shot. And a move of total bravery. Now, Hera has got to decide what she wants to do. She already has one focus given to her by Benthic. Takes the target lock and puts her target lock on to the yellow Nansex. So, this is going to be supremely interesting about what happens here. Ships will probably die at this point. So... Let us see where we're at. It's a range two shot into the yellow Nantex. So it will be two into three. That is a hit and spends her second that she got from uh, Kai Katarn. And that has to be spent. So one evade, two Focus has not decided whether he wants to keep it for offense or defense. Decides, I don't want to lose anything here. Spends it. Takes absolutely no damage. So. Hera shot inconsequential at the minute. But bullseye shot. We will see how many it is. If it's range one, it will be four dice. So four into two. Uh, unmodded and gets hit, hit, crit. Can reload with Predator. Oh, Lordy, three hits. And uh, that's going to have to be spent. That's going to have to be spent here. Excellent. So three shields goes on to uh, Benthic already. So uh, one away from half health. Multiple bullseyes from the blue Nantex. So three into two. Yeah, going to try and attempt to take Benthic off the board. Uh, can spend his focus for three more, guaranteeing at least the one. Gets that one, no focus on anything else, but can now spend Hera's focus to just take one, but Benthic now into hull. Green, four into two, into Benthic. Another red die incoming onto the mats. Yanni makes the box, spins them up into the air, and gets three blanks and a hit. Can reroll one blank with Predator. Gets an eye, will spend his focus uh, for hit crit. And uh, that is a crit, and that is a direct hit. 
One of the only ones that, although in my out of crit thing, never stays because as soon as that happens, you just take another damage. Benthic down to two. Now, does he now decide at range two, does he just go into Benthic here? Which he does do. So it is two into two. Needs some paint, gets absolutely nothing. So that's a first roll with no damage from Finland. Last one. Uh, unobstructed range three into Benthic. Unobstructed range two into Garvin. Goes into Benthic looking for two hits to kill him. Spends that uh, focus. It's a hit crit. Benthic could die. Well rolled by Chris to evade both of those. And now it is time to return fire. So all of these ships have now fired. So this is the bonus for Ireland. Uh, go, being able to go first. He can now use Hera's uh, target lock for four hits. Yanni will roll three back because Nantexes are just super well designed. And he will take three into yellow. So two and three. Good shooting from Team Ireland. Getting a half there on that 39 point shot. Here comes Kyle to try and finish off this shot. Indeed, spends that focus for two. That uh, for it to be off this round, it has to be a blank to evade. That's not enough. That is enough. He's absolutely fine. And a range one shot here into green uh, will be four from Benthic, who had to spend his mod to stay alive. That is hit, crit, crit into the green Nantex, who rolls two evades. So a crit goes into green. And that is a fuel leak. That is not something any ship wants in X-Wing. So let me add all that together. Fuel leak added. Crit token placed on green. And that is the end of the round. So after the first engagement here, uh, the score, uh, Chris has scored 20 uh, by halving yellow. Halving Benthic has given Yanni 31. So an 11 point game with uh, just under 53 minutes to go. So let us have a quick look in the chat. Um, Dom says an Antex position is very nice. Yes, absolutely perfectly flown there by the British captain. Very, very impressive indeed. Huge evades. Yes, Paul Owen. I would agree with that as well. Um, a PS kill would have been very difficult to come back from. Yep. So, uh, Benthic staying alive this turn offers Chris uh, several thought processes. The Nantex are very nimble with all their tractors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but probably have to do other things. They've also got Treacherous. And treacherous, I mean... Let, let me let me just bring up how how mental treacherous is so there we go uh why do you defend you may choose a ship def uh, obstructing the attack and spend a charge if you do cancel one hit or one crit result and the ship you chose gains one strain token after a ship at range zero to three is destroyed recover your charge Ugh. nasty but the problem is they don't have the best dial in the world. So if you don't know what their dial is, here is their dial. Uh, they do have three sloops, A5K, all that sort of stuff. But with a two hull Ewing and Benthic, what can happen very, very quickly is that the layer thing can be spent right now. So if we look at the board state, Everybody could do everything. Green could three sloop to the right, to the top of the board. The other Nantexes will probably swing in 
very, very gently. Uh, the yellow will probably be 5k. The blue one could probably do the three sloop to the left and try and block up Chris's ships. But the problem is, everybody can do a lot here. And Leia is such a great card that you may as well try and use it. I did say that they don't have the best dial in the world. There are better dials in the game. Not many, but there probably are. Like, for instance, the Interceptor's got an amazing dial. The A-Wing's got an amazing dial. The B-1's got an amazing dial. Um, I would expect... Yanni to try and take off Benthic this round and then hunt the X-Wing down that his target lock is on. This is going to be really critical where these ships end up. Uh, I believe that is all the dials now done. So that should not take this long for this to then go. Uh, taking uh, three Predator bullseye shots was probably not what uh, Chris envisaged in the first round of engagement. But it looks like that ping suggests one player is ready. So people in chat deciding what what's a better dial than uh, than the Nantex. Uh, the RZ2, uh, the E Wing with an R4, a silencer, and that's it for definitely better. But there's, there's at least three. So definitely not knocking at all the Nantex's dial. It's a, it's a decent dial, but there are slightly better ones. So uh, Kyle has made his move forward. Um, there's a full stop there from Benthic to be able to get all the, all the passing tokens around because his red is now white. Is like, the play is so absurd. Kyle spins his uh, arc out the side. And uh, gains the stress for that. That is the two moves from the Rebels. Let us see where these separatist non-taxes go. Let's see if I'm right. Green should do a three sloop to the right. Surely does not do that. Does a two forward. Also has the uh, arc pointing the right way right in the Hera. Takes a focus. Looking good. And now we're going to be looking at how how much these ships can block maneuvers so if he thinks that uh, garvin will 4k that is um probably easily blocked by the yellow i don't believe tractored last turn so let's see where yellow goes looks like that's the dial coming up it's a one hard to the left and bumps into Kyle, so no, no shenanigans currently from that one. Where is Hera going? Very, very good question. Um, to be fair, I would probably have too hard to write. That would have probably been my my best chance at, at, at trying to get out of stuff. Uh, the three bank over the top would be blocked currently by blue, uh, which is why I wouldn't have done the three bank to the left. I would have probably disengaged, stayed within her bubble to try and get stuff. Yes, there's a shot out the side from the green Nantex, but you could boost out of that quite easily. I'm more concerned about where 404 and red are going to be to see where we can go. And Hera, as I said, can go right down. Yep. And uh, there's nothing wrong with disengaging and then coming around that gas cloud and uh, keeping her 
hugely important thing. So Blue is going to tractor himself. Maybe to try and block any sort of K-turn or three forward from the X-Wing. That's very good indeed. Problem is by doing that, is there enough room there for uh, Garvin to go in if he has done it too? Probably not. Which could result in a very, very dead yellow if um, if that happens. So as you can see, he doesn't doesn't move. Tractors himself to the left for like a free barrel roll or boost, and then for an action takes an eye. Uh, red tries to cover, say the five forward from Hera. So well played, decent maneuvers in there, and takes a focus. And un unbelievably, he manages to fit in there perfectly and bumps into yellow. So that is the whole entirety of Finland's list has now moved. Where do we end up? So unfortunately for Garvin, he did do the three forward. Uh, gets the bump, Yane. Um, so no focus, no nothing. And... There we go. There is the five forward from Hera to try and get out of arcs. Sadly, she has now landed in two at range one. Neither of them are in an arc for the bullseye. And a boost could be horrendous. The problem is it's still two, three die attacks that she has got to take. And we'll probably take another focus, I would assume, here. Because green will be shooting into Benthic. So there we go. The um, the 5k, really good. Trying to initiative kill yellow, which needs to happen. Oh, it's only a crit. Laws, laws of dice rolling say there's an evade in here. And there is one evade in there. So that's unfortunate for Ireland. That could have been a perfect time to take a Nantex off the board. And now we've got all of Yanni's ships to fire. So this is where target priority is the most important thing in the game. This is just the most important thing. And uh, trying to get Benthic off before he can shoot to me would be quite impressive. So out the side, it is uh, three into two from their mobile arc. Uh, we'll spend that focus for hit crit. That puts Chris under pressure straight away. Natty evades two. So good greens from Ireland matching his flag mat thing. So no damage from green. That is one 20% of the shots going in. Now here is a range one predator shot gets hit eyeball crit spends can't spend up because that is all it is. That is a blank out. Hera will then pass over an evade. No double no direct hit, and that's fine. And it's fuel leak, which with one hole left is not really that problematic, to be fair. It'll just spend more damage cards. Two to the five shot. Next shot will probably be from um, Four White, to be fair. And try and take Benthic off here. Get the initiative kill. Or can just red or 404 will probably finish off Benthic before he gets the chance to do anything. So maybe go for blue first, range one into Hera. So, still thinking. 
and critical choices. Blue only has the one shot, so that is essentially paid for already. Uh, it's only blue, red, and 404 can shoot, so he's going to go with blue. This will be into Hera. Uh, goes out the side, of course. Mobile Arc. Again, these ships being as, as problematic as, as it can be humanly possible. Um, you've got loads of different arcs. So it'll be a range two, two into two, if he decides to go at Benthic. And it goes out the side. So range one is a three in two, three. Gets two hits. Uh, Hera will roll her three die back. Two natural evades. Doesn't need to spend her token. This is going to be a range one shot into Hera as well, and he's going to hope that 404 can take off Benthic. And actually goes range one into Kyle. So I'm going to stop saying about chips I would go into. And gets one hit and two blinks. Three die here. All goods. So that is evaded. And then uh, 404, the last one to shoot, will be a range, either range one into Kyle, or it will be a range two into the U Wing. So. If he doesn't shoot the U-Wing, Benthic survives another turn. And I believe he's shooting... So is that into Kyle? Looked like it could have been. No bump, so it is only the two die here. And there's the pass over for the evade. No damage done. And uh, now it would be Garvin if Garvin actually had a shot, but Garvin does not have a shot because he's touching blue, so no shot there. Cal cannot kill uh, yellow at all. So it's deciding which three die shot he wants to take. Three into the blue that already has a fuel leak, which would uh, be quite advantageous. To be fair, trying to take half on 404 here could be really really good and decides to go three die into three die uh, that's a decision uh, spends that focus absolutely so into two spends takes another damage so treacherous has been used by blue And uh, that's a lot of hits, and uh, and a and a crit, and the crit is disabled. Power regulator. Let's see where that is going to go. That is going to go on to blue. Okay. Disabled power regulator. Hello, you. And uh, Benthic, was that the Benthic shot? Are we now back to dials? Are we all good? We are now back to dials. So, interesting shooting round. Um, 36 odd minutes to go. Chris has destroyed 40 and is now leading 
by nine by getting uh, the half there. Uh, Yanni, not enough, ha did not take the opportunity to take uh, the U wing off the board. So that's interesting. Uh, Lloyd from the 186 says, I think we all know how this game is going to end. It wouldn't be a Team All Ireland game if it didn't come down to the last roll. Well, he says last game, but technically they've all come down to the last roll. And uh, yellow didn't use treacherous, it was blue. So, 35 minutes left. Uh, 404, completely to the best of my knowledge, untouched. Uh, so is red, one hull left on yellow, uh, a fuel leak onto green, and half on blue. To the other side, a, a kind of disastrous fuel leak there for Benthic, but everybody else that I can see untouched on Chris's side. So just delete that guy because it's in the way. I think this game is going to take a while. These uh, these ships are very hard to kill. You can see how strong that um, the Heritani list actually is. It's uh, pretty good at being able to pass evades and all that sort of stuff going. Um, he's actually remembered to, um, when he was testing this, Chris very rarely <laughs> uh, didn't put his uh, layer charges back up again. But that, that is how it is. Um, So as you can see right at the top of the corner, I've just kind of pulled it down there. Um, just where blue is, that charge is gone right beside the 31 point. Blue's one has been used. So we'll be back in a wee, a wee touch because it just makes it a little bit more neat. So where, where do we all end up here? Uh, next level X-Wing plays from uh, both players. So uh, kudos to both of them. No ships have yet exploded, so double kudos to both of them. Why is Benthic alive? Because I'm actually calling him by his right name in this video. That sounds pretty damn good to me. 404 completely blank on his two deaths. Correct. 404 rolled his two, two blanks. So dial's going down here. Looks like we are set. And I would love to see what is going to happen here with Benthic. So they're all just double checking, um, putting their cursor over the center bit of that dial. That allows you to see what your maneuver is to give it one last check. So Benthic and Kyle will move First, Cal is in a very bad position. Benthic is in an okay-ish position, uh, but would probably really like to get one final uh, perceptive co-pilot off. I think the bank to the right uh, is not good. Does a three forward. Perfect maneuver here from uh, the U-Wing to be able to give himself a focus and as Hera is within range two she gets a freebie which is pretty good and then a one forward there from Kyle who bumps to remove the stress because that is a blue maneuver let's see where we are here a one hard to the left from the green Nantex he will now probably do all manners of stupidity and cleverness or just flip his fuel leak which would be quite quite good And he does uh, remove that very dangerous crit. So uh, Green does no longer have the fuel leak. Uh, blue to go next. A uh, three hard to the left. Skirts that rock perfectly. Also has a, a disabled par regulator. Doesn't really uh, 
get that worried about <laughs> the DPR. Uh, so puts down a tractor token. And uh, rotates his mobile turret to the left hand side of his ship. Let's see where uh, yellow ends up. Yellow is quite easily going to be able to go right in behind Benthic. But Benthic needed these focuses. That's, uh, it was an absolute given that that needed to happen. Liam Baker, part of Ollie, Ollie Pocknell and Connor Holmes's XTC roundup, says the only important question is why am I not on an XTC team? Did you pay anybody? Did, did you offer a bribe? Because your results are good enough for you to be in one. I, I, I would have severe conversations with the people in the know and, and get a, a definitive answer. In fact, you guys can decide that on Sunday's roundup of the XTC. I, I want an answer to that from somebody that isn't you. <laughs> Jenny says you should have formed an Antarctica team. A bit cold, literally and figuratively. The Penguins not playing for Madagascar this year. Another another really good team you could have could have picked. You could have had a lion, uh, a zebra. Oh, okay. Where are we at? Too busy looking at chat and not enough time looking at the table here. So uh, we're under half an hour to go. Uh, yeah, 29 minutes. Uh, so plenty of time to uh, do stuff. There is a rather uh, intelligent move from 404. This this time, for um, I, I assume Benthic is is in trouble. Uh, I, would, I can't see 404 rolling blanks again. And uh, Red has already moved and bumped into Hera. So let us see where Chris's ships are going to go. Is it going to be the 4K? Yes, it is. So, uh, has got a strain from uh, the last turn. He's not got a stress from doing that Kyogram turn. And Hera, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So Kant as uh, Kyle bumped, uh, no focuses to be able to get passed over here. So in my opinion, she takes another focus. So Hera with two focuses will go just misses out. On a range one shot in the yellow. And who else will be firing at Hera? Not a lot. I would spend that first that that first one. Spend spend that focus, sir. Spend that focus. Green is only on one. You have two. Taking his time like a good player will. So does indeed spend the first one, three defense dice. That's that's a crit. That is a crit into green, and that is a loose stabilizer. So half points on green, all because he spent that focus. So more points for Ireland. Now, the problem is, for Ireland, is Finland get to shoot everything. So, let's see where we're at. So, an unobstructed shot from yellow at range two. So, that will be two into two. Because that is the only shot available. Comes up as a blue line. So, it is saying unobstructed. Range two should be two into two. That is a hit crit if he spends the, the focus, because he should, because no other ship will probably be shooting at him. Hit crit from yellow and Benthic. Benthic has to 
spend his focus to stay alive, which means more Finnish ships have to shoot at him to get something impressive. I cannot see how on earth Benthic stays in the game here, uh, as 404 has got a range one shot. And, and this doesn't have a bullseye, but uh, range one, that is uh, three uh, into just the one. In fact, that is four into one, my complete apologies. <laughs> He's try, trying to remove that focus token, because that, that, that has been used before. Here he goes, Yannick, captain of Finland, to take off Benthic. And 404 has not rolled well. Uh, the bump there, nothing, only needs a squiggle. Chris comes up with a single squiggle. Benthic still alive. Surely you've got to fire red into uh, Benthic now as well. Um, in bullseye, so a three into two. Three hits would be enough, and that is enough. There's nothing can can be done now, and uh, that is hit, double crit, nothing back. Benthic has died, finally out of the building. 61 points for uh, Yane and Finland. However, there are still some shootings to be done by Ireland, Garvin and Kyle both have decent shots here. We do have an issue uh, if you're supporting Ireland that there are thermal detonators coming out of the back of 404 who has all his five hull remaining. Um, and Green still has a shot into Hera at range one. So that will be a 3v3. Or will he go for Kyle at range two? Personally speaking, I like taking range one shots. I believe that they are far better. No, Cam, it was a, it was a blue line. So green into Harris and Dula. And that's just going to be the one hit. That is easily evaded. So Hera can be passing tokens across to other people. Blue into green for the final shots from Finland. Uh, two dice into two. Has got a focus. We'll spend that focus because he isn't getting shot probably by anybody. Uh, the strain goes away. That's the two shields onto Garvin. Great shooting there from that Nantex. Oh, indeed. So uh, Blue has got a loose stabilizer and is now ioned. Now that could be huge. Uh, doesn't stop the uh, attack going in. So Garvin and Kyle still to shoot. Hera cannot pass on a focus. She is past her bubble. That's uh, not going to uh, do anything. Chris thinking about taking the downtown 3b4 unmodded into unmodded, but uh, decides to go... Uh, End of 404. Uh, whoa, hit, hit, crit. Uh, two dice here for an unmodded 404. Who takes hit, crit. The crit is going to be disabled par regulator. Not enough for half, but not the nicest thing to have as an open crit. And then a four into two. I was going to say unmodded shot, but seeing as Hera can pass focus, does not get a focus token. So two hits. Passes it over anyway. That is two more. That is one away from death. Incredible shooting from Ireland. So lost one of their big ships uh, as Benthic has passed. But uh, with 21 minutes to go, the Rebel Alliance from Team Ireland, 82 points. Yane's Separatist Republic 
Yuck list. Because I have to call non Texas Yuck. I'm sorry. I, I hate them. Uh, 61. So it is a 21 point game with coming up to just 20 minutes left. Hera has been completely untouched. Garvin has lost his shields. Kai Katarn is completely untouched. And Benthic has given up all of Finland's points. On the OBS 404 is down to one hull, but has got will drop two thermals in this round real easily and probably do a massive maneuver out of where he is. So let's see where uh, we end up in here. Um, where will 404 end up? Can, can that ship actually... Let's, let's have a look at, at DBS's uh, dial. So, can three hard, three forward, no three bank, four forward. Needs all that to be able to do an afterburner to try and get out after he has uh, dropped his bombs. So the three hard would probably be okay going to the left and then use one of his afterburners to like exit completely the uh, red and blue non texas will probably swing rounds and trying to get garvin into arcs themselves Hera been able to pass that focus at the end really really key uh do really enjoy that move so let's see what is going to happen no blame they're not wholesome no right. no lies Dom, you're equally falling into this trap. It's, they're, they're not great. Um, yeah, the this, this sixth one almost put me off playing next week, personally speaking. I, I thought it was really bad for the game that you could fit six of these monstrosities into one thing. Uh, not good, in my opinion. So uh, let's get rid of that dial. So that's that was giving you an extended look at where uh, 404 can go. An interesting choice from Paul Owen. For me, you don't do anything. You don't drop bombs to try and block Garvin and do some damage before he explodes. Well, yes, that is quite a valid point uh, and very easily doable. Uh, problem is, I mean, all these ships are roughly the same cost. Uh, DBS is a whole mass of five points more, so not really, not huge. So it isn't, not really. So uh, bombs getting dropped anyway. May, if you if you've bought them, drop them. You have one hole left. You may as well try and be cool and groovy with it. So. Let us see where uh, everybody ends up. I don't believe that blue has got its dial sorted. Because uh, blue, with its oh, of course he doesn't. He's ioned. Ooh, that's very true. So Kyle comes in there trying to get a three die attack into the blue uh, But there is there is a shot that may be even more beneficial. Uh, Kyle can take a three die attack into the Nantex. That could be massive. So loose stabilizer coming down off uh, green as well, uh, getting rid of all of these crits again. 
if you want to know how to play X-Wing, Yanni is flowing practically perfectly in, in this match. Chris's early engagement was quite quicker than I would have, would have expected from a Haritani list, but it has worked out quite well so far. And now the Nantexes are doing something that they don't particularly like to do, which is completely split up. Um, yep. So, uh, Yellow Nantex, with its one hull, still kicking around, being a nuisance, decides to tractor itself, and will probably try and get out of, um, will he try and get closer to Hera? Does indeed go closer to Hera. So if Hera has done it too hard away, uh, she's in a bit of trouble. The uh, rotate to the side is the action. So look at that. A move, a tractor, a rotate, and a focus, nothing, no stress, zero. And people complain about barons and inquisitors. There's a bump from the red, and just to show my hatred of these ships, will now probably tractor beam itself after the bump and be just grand. Oh, look at that. Exhibit. 92, Your Honour, of why nine Texas are utterly broken. So Cal has already moved. Um, there is a bump from Hera. So Hera shouldn't have actually moved first. It should have been uh, Garvin. Now, Garvin does not want to eat one of those uh, bombs, but is probably going to have to. And the Hera bump with the two hard, uh, the one hard to the right there. There are all three ships are taking, taking uh, this first thermal. Uh, so nothing onto Kyle. Just a strain. That is a critical hit on the Garvin, and that's into hull. That's a disabled. Uh, that's another disabled array and a shield off Hera. Shield off Hera. Down to three. So we go again. Absolutely fine. So that that be that, sir. That be that. Um the blank meaning no more damage done. Hera with absolutely no shot at I6. Then we're going to go to uh, 404, who has at the minute got away with this. No shot from yellow at all. Here is a range. Is that two or one? I can't actually see if we, that we will soon see. If two dice come up, it's range two. If it is three, it's range one. Uh, two hull to kill Garvin. So it's range two. He hasn't actually said who he's firing at. We will probably see here. Um, so could be anybody, but uh, it's evaded anyway. So regardless of who the target was, um, that's not very good at all. Side arc out the side from the red, who is um, miraculously untouched so far. The only one who hasn't taken damage is the red nantex so three die it's either going into garvin or it's going into kyle kyle is a uh, probably the better choice here and indeed does pick the hawk what kind of a roll does he get not great no focus that's essentially a blank uh, Blue has got no shot whatsoever out the sides, facing the wrong way. And now we have shots in here. So the no-brainer, range two, three into three. Oh, dear. And this no-brainer shot is hit, crit, crit. That is a dead 
DBS 404 and takes all of it. 40, 22 more points to Team Ireland. And there's more, more, there's a direct hit coming out, so that'll be one more extra to come out. Only the two thermals dropped in that round did do damage, but no advanced protons, nothing like that at all. Wow. So now uh, these guys can now do all their, their malarkey, the cleaning up the board. Kyle does not lose his uh, focus because he has the Moldy Crow title. So it's about 10 minutes to go in this game six between Ireland and Finland. 20 points, Chris Kays leads over Yanni Nunavara, the captain of Finland. We got a game for the next 600 seconds. So, oh, this is exciting. I, I, I'm genuinely liking it. So, uh, as Chet says, if he was to lose Garvin, uh, that would be another um, 23 points. That would be enough for Yane to take the lead. Uh, problem with that, much as that is a completely valid point, the fact that DBS is now gone, the yellow uh, Nantex has only got one. The green and blue have only got two hull left. So Yane up on ships, one, two, three, four, to Chris's three. So decision-making here, absolutely crucial. Remember, these Nantexes can go wherever they pretty much want to go. All guns, in my opinion, blue at the minute, sort of out of the fight. Yellow at the minute, sort of out of the fight. Red does not really have the best place to go. Green should be fine to be able to get decent shots in. Hera is facing the wrong way and will probably want to try and take off an initiative kill any of these uh, Nantexes before they even get to shoot. Half of a, of a uh, Nantex will be an extra 19 points, which means uh, killing Garvin would still not be enough. So game plan is take off at least one Nantex for Chris, try and keep Garvin alive. It's going to be a really good last couple of rounds, but I, I would assume that we will get this round and we may get one more. Let's uh, jump in the chat and see what they say. Uh, yes, Green disengaged, got rid of his uh, loose stabilizer. And uh, did get the block, but still died because of Kyle. Uh, really should be rotating before moving with the tractor. That's actually a very fair point. That is actually the order that it should have been, uh, because it's the rules. So here we go, seven minutes left to play. Uh, should Ireland win this game, uh, they win the set because they will have four wins. Finland, though, have played brilliantly in this entire series and have probably given us our best, uh, toughest games in the XTC so far. So let us see where we end up. Uh, Kyle has decided he's already got two focuses. I would quite like to try and take off blue. Blue's going to move and go that way. So, will he try and um, take the evade clever play from the captain of Finland? Let's see where red goes. A lovely little hard one. That's nice. That is really nice. I didn't. I thought that would have bumped. That's me being totally honest. I thought that would have bumped, but it hasn't. So things are pretty good for Finland. That should 
give an excellent shot here on to Garvin. Garvin, remember, stressed after doing his maneuver. So the important dials truly here after um, red takes all the shenanigans is where does green end up? Green could be huge. It's a one heart away to the right from uh, the yellow Nantex. Decisions on arc, decisions on actions, decisions on tractors, all part of Yane's brain right now. Needs to maximize his ship's efficiency. The tractor goes down first. So the rotate of it was going to happen should happen next, if that is what it is. If it isn't, then it'll just be a focus. So tractors to the right, and then it, it, so all guns on Garvin. That is what it is, and you know. I'd love to know who came up with, with Nantex's abilities because like if you own any of these ships in real life, they are so damn small that you can lose them in a case. And here we go. This will be a, a, a tractor and evade, a focus. Uh, all good. Everything on to Garvin. Garvin can only really do a one or a two straight to get rid of his stress so he can take any action at all. That is all Finland's moves, which will leave us with Garvin, who has to go next at I-4. Closes the wings, so maybe wants to try and, and get uh, his boost. That, I am pretty sure... So Yane has triggered this. You can't perform anything apart from his eye. So he could drop that. Problem being, the only thing that he can do is the eye, which is probably what he's going to do. But closing those wings down has now made this only a two-die attack. So... Hera gets out of dodge, but is now out of the game significantly. Three huge shots for Finland to possibly take the lead. So let us see where we're at. Uh, the first one utterly blanks. Now, this is a four into two from Red Nantex. Bullseye shot needs to remove Garvin. Now, Garvin will get to fire. Uh, predator reroll into a hit. Spends uh, that for four. That's two. So that focus gets spent, gets passed to Hera. She is within range two. So two more into hull. Garvin still alive. Range two shot out the side. Two into two. Hera in range. If he can survive here, it's pretty good. And that is not going to do anything. Garvin Dryas is gone. And as mentioned in the... He have a shot back, sir. Uh, okay. Need a judge for that. It's an I. It's not an eye kill. Uh, Garvin should have
So I have pinged the judge because that is a huge mistake from Chris. He eliminated his own ship there before shooting. That could be massive. Yep, so I, I think we uh, are going to get a captain in um, or a judge as quickly as possible. Chris very intelligently uh, gets his dials in. So there should have been a range two shot probably into, I don't think yellow would have got it, but we will get a judge in. Wow, chat was right. No. So I'm just talking with the uh, the judges here uh, in the Discord uh, to say that is a missed opportunity. However, if the it seems like if the ship has been removed from the table, that is it gone. Uh, no, Richard, he did not uh, engage with Garvin at his initiative step. He removed him um, instead. There has been no shot to my knowledge. Chat, has anybody seen in, in game while I've been on Discord? Was there a shot from uh, Ireland from the X Wing? It would have been a three die attack. I will let, let you guys. So it looks like there will be one final round. And I believe that that was the Kyle shot out the side. Um, Hera can only pass one token. So um, there should have 100% been a Kyle shot, be it two or three dice. Or oh, the drama. You see, people watch the Euros for drama. You don't need to. You need to get on, on to your streaming platform of choice of your streamer so obviously the clock is finished but dials are set for the next round so regardless of what's happening currently right now losing garvin um if i take garvin off uh, because he is dead regardless of what happens garvin is dead i have the separatist alliance leading by three points. So yeah, this matters a little bit. Um, obviously they have decided to continue on with the game. So let us commentate the remainder. Kyle needs to take out a ship. Chris can't afford to lose half on anything. And that is essentially where we're at. So a tractor roll away here from everybody should be absolutely fine uh, by blue uh, to maximize the range. However, if it goes to the right, um, it'll still be a three die attack out the front. So I would imagine probably a, a boost forward. So it will be a side arc shot. And that will be a side arc shot, I would assume. I hope Chris hasn't tilted uh, from that mistake. So blue has done its manoeuvre. Green has done its manoeuvre. Yellow has done its manoeuvre. Takes the evade. What a game of X-Wing. This is going to probably decide, does the set get tied and one final game 
in roughly half an hour. It will be on this channel, uh, so stick around. Your inbox is going to go. Hera has now bumped, so no shot from Hera. There's a one shield down already. Range three. No, no bullseye. Two into four. One hit. Evaded. Yellow has no shot. Blue will not have any shots. It is literally all down to this. And it's going to have to be two hits. And that's not enough. Rerolls that. Hit. Crit. Spending that. But the evade is going to be enough. Nadi evades out. That is game. And Finland win a nail biter right on the ends. Little bit of controversy, but a win is a win. That is now three games all. There is only one game left. And that, as I say, is in 35 minutes on the Tauntaun Squadron YouTube channel. I'm away to get a drink, and it will be a Guinness. Let me tell you that. Congratulations to the captain of Finland. They've pulled it back. It's all to play for. Three each. Game seven. Go get yourself a cup of tea, coffee, or beverage of your choice.